Hey everybody, welcome to Wednesday. Hello, it's Wednesday. Yeah, Heather's a little under the weather today, but Mikey Hood is joining us, thankfully. Yes, it's nice I'm to here. have you here. I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm happy it's the middle of the week. I'm one of those people where I enjoy each day. I don't want the weekend to rush to get here. That you is have the to enjoy right way to day. live, Mikey. Yeah. I think we could all learn from that. Yeah, why rush? Why rush through life just to get to the weekend? That's right. Enjoy every minute of the day. Mm -hmm. You know and. Fly by, and we sort of have an example today of how quickly things change over time. So Susan Copen had some time off, and she goes back to visit her parents, and they apparently have a rotary phone oh. at the house. So she decided to have some fun with her kids and sort of give oh, them yeah. a challenge. She gave them the number to Katie Ka on a number? piece of paper, yeah. and so this, this is her son. Yeah. Attempting to use the rotary <laughs> phone because I mean for them this is totally foreign right. stuff, right? So he has not picked up the receiver. He has uh, his finger in the same <laughs> hole. Right, right. And, and we're not showing this to, to make fun in any way. Yeah. Susan said she put this on Facebook and, and you know, there were some comments like, well, why did you make your kids do this? They had a blast with this. They thought right. it was like learning something totally new. So he had a little bit of trouble with it. And I would too if I had never seen one before, you know. It looks so foreign. Like, what do you do with that? Right. What I liked about those phones that they were hefty. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. you picked it up and you felt like, all right, I am going to talk to somebody. That's right. This is a, a, a phone. And I remember having this in my parents' house. We had rotary phones in both mm -hmm. the bedroom and the kitchen until uh, maybe I was in high school, and then we got a push button phone in their bedroom. Oh, you upgraded. So I would like yeah. I would go like run into the bedroom to call my friends on the push button phone, and I felt like, ooh, ooh look at us. <laughs> We're the first ones on the street with a push button phone. That's right. How times have changed. I had a rotary phone as well, and what I used to hate is that when you would, if you if you messed up a number. You would have to start, start all, all over, over. I again. That. Yeah, you're right. You would have to start all over yeah. again. Now we will say that Susan's daughter had a little better luck with this, and we want to show what Susan's daughter figured out. Two, four, five. Oh, I tried. Is it going ding? <laughs> what Somebody answered. They're like, hello, this is this is Katie K. Yeah. She hung up on us. <laughs> she hung up on Katie K. <laughs> But that's okay. She didn't. She wasn't. She was just sort of. But she completed the call. Yeah. So it was a triumph for all of them. So way to go, kids. Way uh, to go. But yeah, it kind of makes you. And I understand it too. If you grew up and this is what you knew mm -hmm. the entire time, a rotary phone would be very foreign. But we have proven that it still works. It you can does. Still, it you does. can call KDKA on your rotary <laughs> phone. <laughs> and there's no there's no redial on rotary phones either. So you no. have to just do the whole thing. This, it's it's a, a lot, lot of work. work. It's a <laughs> I'm exhausted just talking about it. <laughs> All right, so today is, we like to declare whenever it's one of these national days, and once again, we don't really know who comes up with these, but yeah. today is National Pigs in a Blanket Day, and that kind of sparked a, a discussion yesterday. It did. That's an yeah. interesting national day, yeah. isn't it? What is pigs in a blanket, too? Because here in Pittsburgh, I think it can mean two different things. Mm -hmm. So we put this on Facebook to ask all of you, what do you think it means? Is it the popular appetizer where it's like a hot dog and the little croissant pastry thing, or is it stuffed cabbage? Mm. And 72% of you say it is stuffed cabbage here in Pittsburgh. And Marie has given us the thumbs up. Our floor director, Marie, she agrees I that it's stuffed no cabbage. I had no idea. I Vienna sausages wrapped in the in the pastry. That's what I thought. Uh, yeah. Halupki, Jill is telling us that's how you say the stuffed. Oh, Marie's nodding too. <laughs> Halupki, because I've had, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and I love stuffed cabbage. Yeah, yeah. I do too. It's, it's really good. But I, I just always thought it was the Vienna sausage wrapped in the dough. Yes. That's what well, makes in a blanket to me. Here's the things you learn here on PTL, Mikey. Yeah. And we got a big response. A lot of people weighed in to vote on that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm hungry. I, I am. It sure makes me hungry all the time. Uh, so anyway, that's Pittsburgh for you. Stuffed cabbage. So we're celebrating stuffed cabbage today. Pigs in a blanket. Stuffed cabbage. Sounds good. 
All right, well, Pittsburgh got some love from the Washington <clears throat> Post. I don't know if you saw this, but this was posted I did see this. a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. So a writer for the, the Washington Post, uh, she said she has fallen in love with many cities, but she said Pittsburgh is perhaps the first one to love her back. Aww, and so nice. it's a glowing list of suggestions, things that you can come do when you're visiting Pittsburgh. So we thought it'd be interesting, you know, for, for outsiders, what she's telling them to go see. And so this is just some of what was on her list because it was quite extensive. Okay. She said Kayak Pittsburgh because mm -hmm. you can get out on the rivers, uh, the Monongahela Incline, Apteca, which, do you know about this restaurant? Oh, I've eaten there before. They have fantastic pierogies. And, and yeah. matter of fact, there is always a line out the door to that place. Yes, and yeah. it's a lot of plant-based. It's mm -hmm. good for you, mm -hmm. and there's a Polish vibe with everything. Right. Uh, PG&H, check out that store. So that's the store that's downtown. We've had them on before. It's, it's local artists and vendors that create things. And then it's a, it's a gift shop. You can go in there and buy things, and it's houseware items. And also Wiggle Whiskey. That's cool, yeah. Wiggle yeah. whiskey, that uh, that's really popular popular here. Yeah. I mean, I, I have friends who come into town and then take the Wiggle whiskey home with them and pass it out to their friends. They I think love that's it. a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, and I'm sure the folks at Wiggle whiskey endorse that sort of thing because <laughs> yeah. it's good for them. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> All right, so that's positive no news for Pittsburgh. And we also have something else that's kind of po really cool video from mm -hmm. Visit Pittsburgh that we want to show you. Uh, yeah, this is all about uh, putting up a chair. Pull up a chair. Yeah. Uh, you are welcome here. And so it shows all these scenes in Pittsburgh of people inviting people to sit down, pull up a chair. Uh, and, and this is going to get shown all over the place, not just on social media, but it will be shown uh, before the new Tom Hanks movie, the Mr. Rogers movie, in New York, L.A., and D.C. Uh, it will also be shown in Times Square on one of the big screens oh, wow. there for four weeks in New York. York City and you can watch the entire ad at PittsburghTodayLive.com but I just love I, I don't know how they came up with this it's but really clever yeah. it, it really is just a play on Pittsburgh and how welcoming we are and and everyone loves Mr. Rogers I just feel like Mr. Rogers is right. Pittsburgh yeah you're absolutely right yeah. so it's it's great that they're running it right before the Mr. Rogers movie mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. all these chairs and all these different places too there were the Roberto Clemente Museum there they're at the Mr. Rogers statue at the, the convention, convention Center, Center. Yeah. yeah we spent some time there at the Home <laughs> Garden show but it's just a really sweet thing and I think it's a, a great way to promote the city it is I, they probably needed a lot of chairs for that video yeah yeah a lot of chairs in Pittsburgh. Well, they did a good job, and yeah. you can watch it all at PittsburghTodayLive.com. Mm -hmm. Speaking of videos, there's another video sensation oh, yeah. that is going I on. I saw right this now. video. You're, are you ready yeah, to go? I'm ready to go. <laughs> all right, so this is the Beyonce <laughs> dance challenge. People are dancing to, <laughs> to this. Uh, it's it's her new song, Before I Let It Go. Before mm -hmm. I Let Go. Let Before go, I Let yeah. Go. Mm -hmm. And so she posted on Instagram people dancing to this. And in the song, it's it's sort of like there are instructions on how to do the dance, right? Right. right. So and have so you I tried think, this, Mikey? I, I have tried it a little bit, and I, I still need a little bit of practice. But my favorite part, I don't think he's gotten to it yet. But it's the it's the backup part. I like when he backs up. The backup. Yeah, part. the backup. But um, I can just see this dance being the hit dance this year at all of the weddings. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. probably exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It has gone viral already, and she obviously loved that uh, people are, are doing this, and so she put it on Instagram. And I got a. I am very David, uncoordinated, David. as we have established on this show, <laughs> but I would be willing to try this because I love to dance, I even though I can't. I think you could do it. I Heather told could. me I dance like Elaine on Seinfeld, <laughs> 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 which is kind of true. If you just go home and just and just practice in the mirror, just practice for a little bit, you okay. stretch a little bit, I, th I think you, you can think have of, it. Yeah. I think I need more than practice, Mikey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Easter Bunny is apparently doing this. In one of the oh, videos, yeah? there's pictures of the Easter. Oh, okay, oh, here we go. Look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Easter Bunny's the Easter got Bunny's... it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that statement. Okay. <laughs> no, now right, that I look closer, we're going to dive out of that video. <laughs> yeah. But we have one more to show you, and it right. concerns the Easter Bunny as well. The Easter and, Bunny is popular. Well, you know, Sweet. Easter just happened. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah. And, and this is video, it happened outside a comedy club in Florida. This man and woman bumped into each other and there was a little bit of confrontation on the street. The Easter Bunny sees this and intervenes <gasps> to help the woman. So the Easter Bunny's like, you know, doing what he can here. Yeah. Um, oh. to, and he holds the, the guy there until police show up. Oh, look at that. And so this is the Good Samaritan Easter Buddy who was not afraid to get involved. Right. And you can hear in the video too, like people cheering on the bunny. 
Like, go Easter Bunny. Go, go, um, whoa. But, well, yeah. The Easter Bunny, he's, he is, don't I wonder mess if he's a boxer. Easter Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> he's got some moves. But yeah, and then once the police showed up, he was still out there sort of like, you know, woo -hoo, yeah, woo, I think showing he was off at that point. Doing a little bit of dancing. I mean, I, I think that was great that he stepped in and helped help the lady out. But, you yeah. know, maybe for kids, it might have been a little traumatizing. <laughs> they might I, not look at the Easter Bunny the same anymore. <laughs> but he was fighting on the side of good. He, he was. You he know, was. And, and I mean, obviously, we're showing this on TV and it's all over the Internet. Yeah. But where it happened, I doubt that there were very many kids around at the time because yeah. it was probably late, late at night. But, yeah, it's a whole new side of the Easter Bunny. A whole new side. Don't mess know. with the Easter Bunny. All right. Well, we're learning a lot today, and we have a lot more to learn, too. We have a great lineup of guests today, so take, we're going to take a short break and then get started with the show. It's Wednesday, and that means we are cooking with Rania. Last week, she made us a ham for Easter. Today, she's making us a treat for her Greek Orthodox Easter that's coming up this Sunday, so I'm excited about that. Oh, plus, we're talking with Sean Collier about names that could have been for our Pittsburgh sports team. Can you imagine cheering for the Pittsburgh Shamrocks? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me either. Sean tells us about that and other team names next here on PTL. And I'll introduce you to a country music guy from Dormont. Yes, Dormont. Yeah. So how did this city kid end up making country records and going on tour with his band? Justin Fabus shares his unusual journey with us and also some of his music. Thank you for being with us on PTL. We have a lot ahead. Stay with us. Yeah.